friends, you guys ready for another prompt today? Let's see what it's going to be. I'm excited to see. I really enjoyed yesterday's prompt a lot. So let's see what other new things we can discover. Okay, da da da. Layers. Hmm. Layers. So I will gather some things and we'll get started. Okay, I went and got some supplies and some magazine um, stuff. So remember the other day I was looking for my periwinkle? I found my periwinkle. It's one of my favorite colors and then I found this. And it says, every day I draw a new section of my own map with crayons on wax paper. Most of it is in periwinkle because that's my favorite crayon color. And then I hang it in the window and let the sun shine through it. I can see all the mistakes and all the places where I had to turn around to try a different route. Those are the best, most beautiful parts. Hmm. Love that. Um, you know, texture, jewelry, what else did I, oh, isn't, oh man, I would love to live there. <laughs> and so, yes, texture, I keep saying that, obviously you guys know it's texture. Speaking of, um, I can see all the mistakes and all the places where I had to turn around to try different, to try a different route. Well, let me tell you guys, I did. I tried this earlier. Oh, hello, Eris. I tried watercolor on um, the gessoed paper. I just wasn't, I, mean, I wasn't feeling it. So just, you know, honesty and transparency on this channel. So we're gonna do something different. And Eris is coming for a visit. We may have to pause the camera, huh, for pets. Oh, and then I did this little um, thing here. Um, I just printed off like it's free, um, what do you call those? free prints like there's websites where you can get some free prints so I just printed this on um, cheap old watercolor and painted on it and I like the results of this so we're gonna do some layers aren't we Eris say hello all right guys <laughs> I'll be back let me give this guy some attention all right so this is what I'm gonna do I like this so much we're gonna use the periwinkle and these are some flowers I was trying to mess around with. We could put them down on layers in here too. Kind of, I guess, recreate this picture. Recreate the picture while cutting it up. So this is what I was thinking. I know I'm gonna end up having to use the center again. Something like this. I'm gonna cut this out. The mountains like so. Obviously it's not gonna be exactly perfect. which is the lovely field of these wonderful, hmm, I don't know what kind of flowers they are, but they're pretty. Okay, so my thoughts are, we're gonna put this in like so. But I'm going to do the background. Maybe we can have this more. Not so much in the center. We'll do the background periwinkle. I was trying to think of a <clears throat> color. Like an underpainting. So I'm going to do yellow. And 
And so this will be down a little bit, not exactly centered, but down here. And then we'll do our little flowers and layered effect. So, okay, let me get my darker yellow. And we'll squirt some, oops, everything's falling off. I like doing the palette knife thing again. Let's try it. Why not? That was fun yesterday. Okay, so we're just gonna, this is our ender painting, right? Well, hello, Rolo. So I have this little rolly chair that I use in or in front of my computer when I'm editing videos and doing stuff there. But when I'm in here, which is my son's uh, room, Trevor's old room, this is what I call Studio B, <laughs> being all fancy. I have to bring the rolly chair in here so that Roscoe can sit on it. Okay, let's see. But then Big Rollo, or Big Boston, got on there and decided he wasn't gonna sit there. He's a big boy for a Boston. So I think I think that looks good there-ish. So we'll bring it down to about there. Okay. I suppose are we going to do the periwinkle this way? I think we should. Even though this isn't texture paint, it's just regular thin paint. Works pretty good. Oh, well, hello, Rolo. Very dramatic on your... Yes, you are. Hello. Hi. He's sitting on the futon now. I would really love to have the futon not in here, but... I brought it in for the boys to sleep on and hang out on. It's a ropey old futon. It's very uncomfortable, old, very lumpy. But the only pup that really sits on it is Rolo, and I could use that space, but I guess when you have pups or animals, you do spoil them, no doubt. Right. That goes about there. Let's do, let's fell off my chair, guys. Let's do some green for the foreground. Oops, I probably should shake. Okay. I think I'm gonna do a different texture with the foreground. Although I do like that palette knife effect. Yep, let's just do the palette knife. Why not, right? As you can see, me painting with the palette knife yesterday really just inspired me to do more and don't be surprised if going forward until I'm sick of doing it, that I'm gonna paint with the palette knife. See, that's what I love about these challenges is sometimes you find something that you really just resonate with in your artwork while making, you know, funky art or, you know, stuff that doesn't make sense or is awful. But still, it's these days that you discover, oh my goodness. Uh, so yes, I haven't used this in a while and there's a blob making a mess. That's okay. 
okay, I'll get it. Oof. Yeah, this is old paint my aunt gave to me a long time ago. And I have limited paint colors, so I thought I'd use it up. But it's fine. Work. Okay. Is that dry? Nope. Maybe we should let that dry before I put my periwinkle down. And we can fuss about with the middle ground here. Our mountains. That'll go about right here. I think we'll just go ahead and glue it down. And we can extend the edges with paint like we did yesterday, incorporate the paint in with the collage. I was just looking for some glue. Again, doing the middle. I've decided too that I like working big and I love working on big canvases. And at the same time, I do enjoy making the little mini junk journals. So what have you guys discovered messing around with art techniques and paint and art supplies? Have you guys discovered a, a part of your art, a way that you do your art, a tool, a color? that you pretty much use in every piece. I think that's so cool when you discover that. It's such a neat feeling. Okay, I'm gonna glue this down. I'm gonna let this dry and we'll be back with the rest of it, okay? All right, that is dry. Well, almost, mostly. Okay, so let's do the periwinkle. So while that was drying, I went and took a shower. Cause you know, sometimes the day just gets away from you and I'm like, ah, oh, do this. So my friend Reba and I, this spring, this was all her idea and I was like, cool, let's do it. She wanted to make her own shampoo bars for your hair shampoo, yeah. So we started out with we made a whole bunch of stuff this summer and they're all in bar form. So we made some deodorant and I used that and that works pretty good. Then we made, what else did we make? Um, soap and that's gonna be ready in October. Well, this month actually, I should actually see if our bars are ready. Um, what else? Oh, she made me some dish soap, but it's in bar form. So basically you just run it under the water and you know, your water gets sudsy. I don't have a dishwasher. I know that's horrible, isn't it? I'm so used to it now. Um, basically because I just didn't want to spend the money. They're expensive. And right now it's just hubby and I. Um, but when Trevor was living with us, he was our dishwasher. So, you know, he had to do the dishes most of the time. I don't actually mind doing dishes, honestly. I find it kind of therapeutic. Anyway, so dish soap, I haven't tried that. And today, for the first time, I tried the bar hair bar soap. Now, the reason I was hesitant is because I have fine, fine, straight hair. It's not thin, it's just, like, fine, like, there's a lot of it, but it's thin, not thin, but you know what I mean. But Reba has naturally curly hair. And I'm not talking just wave, but actual curl. So she was looking for something to really moisturize her hair. She goes, you should try it. And I'm like, I'm afraid there's too much oil. It's gonna weigh my hair down. Well, today's the day I tried it. I don't know, my hair is still wet. I don't know. I'll let you know if you're interested how that turned out. Okay, there is the palette knife. We'll probably go back in there. But I kind of like the underpainting. This is pretty dry, almost. I think we can still play with these. If anything, then we can paint them. Um, so I thought we would just layer some flowers.
with our portrait being, that picture being our inspiration with the periwinkle sky. But we should paint these, huh? Or should we leave them? I don't know, it doesn't really match. I kind of wanted it to be a more co cohesive painting. Right, so that looks pretty good. We can do that and make some more texture and layers. Let's let this dry. We'll go ahead and paint these. And we can lighten up the foreground if we need to. So we'll put this over here. trying to paint something on there. I think it was butterflies. <laughs> I'm telling you with watercolors I really believe in good paper. When you have good paper with some tooth on it, oh I think it really does make a difference. This was watercolor paper but it there's no texture on it. It was given to me so I am not complaining. I have gotten some good results off of it. Okay, so let's see, Ooh, here's another one. We, oh wait, I was thinking, let's paint these all white and then we can stamp on them. Get my white. I like to stamp. We can use some of my homemade stamps. So why don't I go ahead and paint these off camera and um, then we'll get back to the layering. All right guys, I'm back and I was fiddling around with the background. I took a paper towel and kind of, because as much as I love the palette knife, it doesn't do well with thin acrylic paint. So I'm bringing out the texture paint. Um, Texture paint and oil paint, I believe, is what acrylics really, or acrylics, palette knife is good for. So, I also uh, painted these paper cut, cut out, I don't know, I was playing around with paper, cutting out paper flowers. Let those dry a little bit. And I thought maybe we could palette knife the the mountain range a little more in gray, I guess. So yes, we're definitely getting the layers on and we're doing the palette knife, which yes, I know I've said that already. So let's get started with this.
feel like I want to cut this palette knife in half or something that's long, but you kind of get the point of it when you're actually on canvas. Then in a journal, a sketchbook journal type. See if I can um, figure out more texture strokes. Looks pretty good. We'll do some purple, you know, uh, what was a scrape? Scrape marks for some dramatic, um, yeah, for some drama, 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 drama in the pain, just a little bit. Oof. Really dark. I bet it's gonna be pretty though. It's... I'm gonna have to get another paper towel. Or... Okay. Ooh, it's gonna be a beautiful plum. clouds. Stormy plum clouds. mountain range in the back, but I think we'll just, we'll leave it as dramatic plummy clouds. How about that? Didn't realize this was actually going to be kind of a painting of sorts, but that's the fun thing. You never know where it's going to take you. further, aren't I? Well, maybe it is a bigger mountain range. I suppose. Why not, huh? Okay, well, that's what it is. <laughs> All right, we'll be back after it dries. All right, I forgot the camera was off, so I kept going with the paint. So let me just bring you up here and show you what I did. Just had to add some pink, you know.
Right, so this may take a minute to dry. So we'll come back with these flowers. Maybe we'll just put them over and it can just be an abstract painty paper page, painty paper page, sorry. All right guys, I'll see you shortly. All right, this is mostly dry. There are some spots that are still, you know, the thicker parts of the palette knife. But I think we're just gonna work around that. And I went ahead and painted the flowers. I decided why it was just kind of boring, obviously. So I went with Periwinkle, of course. We can, um, I just wanted to, we can audition them on our page. I was again thinking of glitter, but I don't know, we'll see what this looks like. Okay. So I thought the Periwinkle, to bring out the Periwinkle from the Dark Plum would be something we could do. But then I kind of wanted to, Um, stamp the tops of them with some of my homemade designs to give it some depth. Anyway, <clears throat> I think we're just going to go for it, you know, on this channel. I just try to go for it and experiment and hopefully that encourages you guys. See, I don't know if it needs, I don't know, guys. I kind of like the idea, don't know if it looks great. We're just gonna go with it because I could spend all day fussing with this. And I don't really want to, even though I would, I would totally be fussing with it all day off camera. So let's just go ahead and stamp these up. I have used my stamps with paint before. I can show you the page. So actually the, you see that? So it does pretty good. Or did I do that with ink? I can't, I think I did it with ink. But, um, uh oh. Oof, okay. I think we'll be all right. So we're gonna do, what was I gonna do? I'm gonna do these little circles. Kind of funky. Thing is, there's an edge on them, so let's just go for it, shall we? We'll do black soot. We'll just start on the little one in case we don't like it, then then it won't matter. The little one, you won't get the full. To well, let's see. Kind of cool. I don't know how that'll look, but it'll give it some some layers, some definition. Let's just go for it. We don't have to do them all the circle-y ones. What do you think? It's interesting. If we keep it on the pink, and don't bring it up in the blue. We'll do the small ones this way. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry guys. Shall we do the big ones a different design, do you think? Or keep 
keep it the same. Uh, maybe we'll just keep it the same. I don't know. Okay, getting there. Or we don't have to use the big ones at all. We can just keep with the little ones. Well, you know, that's a really good option. I like that better. Who said we had to use the big flowers? Yes, who said we had to use them all? I said that, so we can just not do that. All right, let's see. Put the lid on here. Okay. Let's make sure we're in focus here. I'm gonna bring you in. I don't even know if you saw any of that. I apologize, guys. Well, I kinda like that. And now I <clears throat> want to add a little bit of glitter. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, guys. Right. Okay, I got my art. My art glue. My art glitter glue. And I think I'm just going to do um, some random dots on some. <clears throat> then I'll do some lines on others. So, do dots. Oh, I better hurry because this stuff glues fast, doesn't it? I mean, dries fast. Honestly, sorry. Uh, to say. So, here we go. I used to have some embossing powder and old style embossing powder with a stamp or something. I cannot for the life of me find it. And I had one of those um, wax seal things. So, all right, there's probably enough glitter in it. Let's put the lid on. And I should see if I can find the, what do you call it, the little pen that goes in here. Well, I will find it eventually. Okay, I think I'm going to like this. Woohoo, look at it, guys. It's not pretty. It goes well with the periwinkle. Love it. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up and we'll put it on our portrait. All right, let's glue the flowers down, down and be done with this prompt today. I'll bring these over. Put today's prompt layers. I know it sticks out kind of like a sore thumb, but I can fuss with that maybe later. Uh, 
that. That one there. All right, I think my favorite part is the flowers. What's your favorite part? Oops. Maybe you don't have one. It is all good sometimes. We're just meh about our artwork, but I kind of like it. It's kind of funky, like most of my stuff. All right, I'm gonna give you a close-up look, guys. And um, thank you for joining me today in another art prompt challenge. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow. And I appreciate you guys. And remember, wherever you are, I love you. Bye.